What's good? It's Wu. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. We are doing a brief discussion, kind of a primer, before we get into the documentary, The Kings, which is basically about the four kings, uh, four great fighters for the greatest of their era. We're talking Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas the Hitman Hearns, Marvelous Marvin Hagler, rest in peace, and Roberto Duran. And people, even in the modern era, will reference the four kings uh, largely out of frustration on today's game, notably in the welterweight division where it's difficult to get the best to fight the best. Whereas when you hearken back to the era of the four kings, the idea is that the best were fighting each other, taking more risks, and that's why you will see losses on their record. Whereas in today's game, the zero on, in the loss column just means more than it should, really. Because it's also preventing a lot of these probably great fighters from taking the same risk. So before we you know, get into later videos about the documentary itself and about you know comparing the four kings, one thing that I want to discuss today is before you get into the... The King's documentary, which airs on Showtime coming up this weekend, part one of the miniseries at least, before you get into that and start comparing the careers of the fighters, keep in mind this very important fact. Because I often see Roberto Duran almost by default being ranked third and fourth out of the four when I see a lot of these rankings from boxing fans. Like they'll usually have like Sugar Ray Leonard one, maybe Thomas the Hitman Hearns two, and Hagler 3, Duran 4, or Duran 3, something like that. But rarely do I see Duran in the top two. And that's largely because, you know, he had the, the split with Sugar Ray where he first beat Sugar Ray, then Sugar Ray beat him. That was the famous no moss in the rematch. And then years, years down the line, they fought a third time. Sugar Ray Leonard won that. And Duran lost to... Uh, Thomas the Hitman Hearns, he got knocked out in the second round, and he lost to Marvelous Marvin Hagler. But before you're so quick to place him third or fourth out of these four kings, understand Duran's career, his pro career, started in 1968. Marvin Hagler began his pro career in 73, and then Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas Hearns, they didn't come until 1977, nine years after Roberto Duran already hit the professional scene. So when Duran had these losses against, you know, the Sugar Rays and the Thomas the Hitman Hearns, this was in the 80s. He was already more than a decade plus into the game. And furthermore, he was a lightweight through the first 10 years of his career. So he was fighting at 135. He's a smaller guy. He's about like 5'7". Whereas Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas the Hitman Hearns entered the game as welterweights. 147. That's where they won their first titles. That's when they first fought each other. Sugar Ray and Thomas the Hitman Hearns. And then Marvelous Marvin Hagler was a middleweight. His whole career. We're talking 160. So here you've got this guy again. 1968 out of Panama, be, turns professional. He wins like the first 28 fights of his career. And then he fights the champion, Ken Buchanan. Ken Buchanan was out of Scotland, Hall of Famer. And Duran drops him in the first round. Duran was like a two to one underdog against the champion Buchanan. So here's this menacing figure, Manos de Piedra, Hands of Stone. So Duran comes in and he drops Buchanan in the first round. And then they just have this, this fight where the tenacity in which Duran was coming at Buchanan is just something that fight fans were not seeing. It was kind of reminiscent to when Pacquiao was taking the world by storm. When he was coming up, you know, beating Ledwaba for a title and then overwhelming Hall of Famer Marco Antonio Barrera. It's where you've got this combination of the speed and the power. Now, Duran was hitting so damn hard at the time that people were kind of underestimating his hand speed. Well, in 1972, in this fight against Ken Buchanan for Ken Buchanan's belt, the WBA, the ring, the lineal titles at lightweight, Roberto Duran stops him at the end of the 13th round. And this was in 
Madison Square Garden, New York City, United States. Most of Duran's fights at this point had been in Panama. He fought like in Mexico once or twice, and he had come to the States once for the fight against uh, Buena Huertas, which was a uh, first round knockout for Duran. So this was like his second fight in the US, captures the title from Ken Buchanan, and it wasn't without controversy. Like there was an exchange as the bell rang. So they both, I think Buchanan was the first to hit after the bell, but they both exchanged after the bell, one of Duran's shots w traveled low, or at least around the belt line, but it, it was low-ish. Ken Buchanan doubles over. He's on the canvas in pain. He needs, you know, help back up, gets to his corner. The referee sees the condition that Ken Buchanan's in, and he stops the fight. So Roberto Duran wins that officially via TKO. So he is now a boxing sensation. His name was buzzing for some time. Who's like, who's this kid out of? Panama because Roberto Duran turned pro at like 16 years old again 1968 so you, you know four years later he's not even 21 yet and he's fighting for the lightweight title so he beats Buchanan and then he fights a few fights wins those defends his belt a couple times and then he has a fight up at uh, uh, 140 against somebody who should be in the Hall of Fame Esteban de Jesus out of Puerto Rico De Jesus beats Duran via decision, but this was a non-title fight because, again, this is up a weight class. So Duran goes back lightweight, defends his title against uh, Jimmy Robertson, and Duran wins like his next 10 fights before he gets a rematch opportunity. But this time, it's his title defense against the Puerto Rican Esteban De Jesus. So this is their rematch, and this is in the sweltering heat in Panama City, long-awaited showdown. And in that first Duran versus De Jesus fight, De Jesus dropped Duran in the first round. And in this rematch, De Jesus, who's a very, very crafty fighter, quick hands, moves around well, great endurance, good power as well, he drops Duran in the first round of this rematch. So it's like, whoa, okay, what we got going on here? Is the title going to change hands and De Jesus become the champ? So this ends up being one of the most grueling fights you will see. You know, they talk about some of the most grueling fights in history, right? The Thriller in Manila, Ali versus Frazier 3. You got to check out Roberto Duran versus Esteban De Jesus 2 for Duran's lightweight title. And like you could hear like the, the phrases that the commentary team, including uh, Ferdy Pacheco, who I believe was doing like the, the color commentary. But one of them like referred to him when he's in his corner getting some water poured on his head, he being Duran. And there was just a look about Duran. Some of it was like, you know, the kind of teenage, you know, facial hair that he was growing. Super young, but he kind of had, you know, the slightly werewolfy, shaggy hair. And I think they even referred to him at a, some point in the fight, either in that one or that Buchanan fight, as werewolf looking. But he's just in his corner and you can see his eyes and they say, you know, they refer to his eyes as like looking like black holes. And one of them referred to him as the eager champ, you know, because he just looked like he was foaming at the mouth, ready to get back out there. And once he gets back out there, it doesn't matter whether it's the third round, the sixth round, the ninth round, the 12th, 13th. Because remember, this is back in the day of 15 round title fights. So it doesn't matter what round. Duran's coming back out here with a head full of steam, and he's re ready to put his punches together. He is a volume puncher, so he's throwing combinations all the time. He's a good defensive fighter, not a great defensive fighter, but his defense is basically, I'm going to throw these combinations at you relentlessly with power in both hands. Very nice right hand. Look at the way he dropped Benny Huertas. Beautiful right hand. He throws to the body with both hands. Hooks, uppercuts. He just has an arsenal. And his whole thing, like early Pacquiao, is I'm going to bring this avalanche, this storm. Let's see if you could keep up on this treadmill from hell. And Esteban De Jesus at this point is the only one who was able to keep up on that treadmill. And he's keeping up somewhat on the treadmill in the rematch, at least through the first few rounds, maybe six, seven rounds. And then he starts to kind of tire a little bit to where you see the tide turning. Because remember, Duran is the one who got dropped early. And a few rounds in, it's tough, it's tough to make heads or tails. We don't know who's winning this one. And then Duran just continues to pour it on. And he's got this smirk. And he's looking at De Jesus like, yeah, 
I got you. And it's like this sinister grin. And they even refer to it as such. They're like, look at Duran with that menacing scowl on his face. You know, I mean, this guy was a nasty, nasty individual, man. About as scary an individual as, that the, as the lightweight division has ever seen. I mean, it's only a, a certain few who struck this type of fear into opponent. And again, Duran is dealing with the real one here. Esteban De Jesus doesn't play. Well, Duran ended up knocking De Jesus out, stopping him in, I believe, the 13th round. No, it was the 11th round of the rematch. So he retains his title and he overcomes. Beats the only guy to, ha to have ever beaten him to this point. And so now, Duran is still the champion. And he, after this ha De Jesus uh, victory, or this victory over De Jesus in the rematch, he is 42-1. and one. And we are still talking 1974. Marvin Hagler is basically a rookie professional up at middleweight at this time. And Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas the Hitman Hearns are still three years away from turning professional. So after that, win over De Jesus, redemption, he goes on, he being Duran, goes on to win his next 20 fights before he gets a third fight against Esteban De Jesus, who won the WBC title against Guts and... Ishimatsu out of Japan. So now you've got Duran, the long time, long time WBA champ. At this point, let's see, he won it against Buchanan in 72. His third fight against Esteban de Jesus, which at the time of that fight, Duran is 62 and 1. And that third fight against Esteban de Jesus, the rematch was in uh, 74. And then the third fight wasn't until 1978. So from 72, to 78, Duran has been the lightweight champion of the world, and then he beats Esteban De Jesus via 12th round TKO in the rubber match, becoming undisputed title because now he's captured the WBC. This is before the WBO. So he captured De Jesus' WBC title. He's already the ring champ and the lineal champ and the WBA champ, so he becomes undisputed lightweight champ in 1978 with that win over De Jesus now they're two and he's two and one against De Jesus and that still was his only loss of his career up at 140 so he is now 63 and 1 in 1978 now Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas the Hitman Hearns are rookie professionals up at 147 so at this point is when Duran starts to set his uh, sites at the higher weight classes and then we can talk four kings so before you place Roberto Duran last on that list or second to last before you even start evaluating them understand this guy had a Hall of Fame career one of the greatest lightweights in history before these other guys were even in the mix I feel like that gets lost in this four kings discussion but yeah, let me know what you think about it. I'm excited about the Showtime documentary, The Kings. Can't wait to watch it. We're going to have more videos actually comparing the careers of the four. I mean, look, just for some context. Remember, at the time, 1978, of that rubber match win for Duran over De, uh, over De Jesus to become the undisputed lightweight champion, 1978, he was 63-1. Sugar Ray Leonard retired. I mean, he retired a few times throughout his career, but his final record, 36 wins, three losses, and one draw. So not nearly as prolific as the career of Roberto Duran, although Sugar Ray Leonard did win belts in multiple weight classes as high up as light heavyweight, but Duran ended up fighting up at light heavyweight before it was all said and done. Duran was fighting, by the end of this whole thing, was fighting in weight classes that he had no business in. Imagine if, um, name a lightweight who spent most of their whole heyday at 135, and then imagine them going up to fight Gennady Glovkin at 160. Because that's basically who Marvelous Marvin Hagler was. Just, you know, size and dominance over the weight class for a period of time wise. You could even argue that Hagler ended up being more dominant at, at, at uh, middleweight than Triple G. Whole other discussion. The point being is, 
Duran started to march up these weight classes, and that's where he started running into some difficulty. Because, I mean, Thomas Hearns started at like 147 and it ended up fighting as high up as light heavyweight. Thomas Hearns is like six foot two with like a 78 inch reach or something crazy like that. Compared to Roberto Duran's like five foot seven, again, spent the first 10 years of his career at lightweight. So, again, don't evaluate. The four kings before keeping these things in mind. By the way, Esteban de Jesus ended up a tragic uh, story. Like, he ended up dying of AIDS, like in 1989, like at the age of, I think, what was he, like 37? He's something super young. But, uh, yeah, you know, he had discovered that his brother had caught, uh, had tested positive. And they were supposedly sharing needles because I think he was um, shooting up coke at the time. And around this same time, he gets involved in a uh, traffic dispute that results in him murdering, killing a 17-year-old guy, getting convicted for that homicide, and then basically being sentenced to like life in prison. And keep in mind, he's like a Puerto Rican national hero. Like picture, you know, Miguel Cotto, Felix Trinidad, Esteban de Jesus was the man. And so he kills this guy kid in a dispute he's in prison discovers that he's um that he has aids and so he you know at this time this was like a year or two before magic johnson retired from the nba after testing positive for hiv this was when hiv and aids was like a death sentence so it certainly was for de jesus because we, we didn't know anything about treatment nothing we like it was just like oh shoot so de jesus is in prison has AIDS, and they end up commuting his sentence because basically he's such a national hero, and then he dies shortly after his prison release. Super tragic story. But yeah, Esteban de Jesus, look him up and watch that second fight between Roberto Duran and Esteban de Jesus. And yeah, just understand, before we start talking Duran's fights against Thomas Hearns, Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard, he had a whole lightweight legacy before marching up the, uh, the weight classes. So yeah, let me know what you think. Please leave your comments in the comments. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. I'm Woog. Thanks for tuning in.